Hi, this is Henry Stansberry, and Henry is here today at the Waterfowl Festival in Easton, Maryland. Henry, you have devoted an incredible amount of time to the festival and to artifacts about the waterfowl heritage here on the Eastern Shore. Could you tell us about that, please? Yeah, the, the festival was started in 1970 by Harry Walsh and, a, and some other citizens of, of Easton. And my favorite story about the beginning of the festival was that uh, Harry decided that there should be a celebration of our waterfowl heritage. And it really wrapped around the artifacts collection that he had collected over the years and published in his famous book, The Outlaw Hunter. My favorite story is when his daughter was asked about it. Uh, Mary B is her name. Mary B said, I came home from school, high school. I walked into the house and the walls were empty. <laughs> Everything was gone. And, and she said, mother, are we moving? <laughs> And she said, no, we're not moving. Your father decided to have a waterfowl festival. And, <laughs> and he, he, took, was, he was he a took, doctor. <laughs> he took everything off the walls. He took everything out of the house for the festival. And, uh, you know, she was, she was startled because it was all gone. So that's how the festival started. And the artifacts has been the heart of the, of the festival in the early days. Now it's uh, a bit of a sideline because this art form has gr grown into an art event. And uh, the, the working decoys are still here. We talk about the heritage here. But as you know, go, as you go around town, it has evolved now into an art form, which includes flat art, the decorative carving, sculpture, bronze, etc. cetera. Henry, um, you have a collection here that you're showing all of the festival goers. Um, too. So could you tell us about your collection, please? Okay, today what, what I'm doing is I'm celebrating the 100th anniversary of the carving by the Ward Brothers. Now the Ward Brothers, Lem and Steve Ward, are probably the most important carvers in the transition from working decoys into the art form that we all celebrate today. In 1918, the very first rig of birds looked like this. This is from Steve Ward's original uh, decoys that he made in 1918 to hunt over himself. He had no idea at that time that his neighbors were going to ask him to make decoys for them and they were willing to pay for them. They were barbers. Steve and Lim Ward were bar barbers in Crisfield and they continued to cut hair as they, as they carved decoys in the 20s the 30s, the 40s, and eventually they decided it was time to stop cutting hair and just make decoys. Mm. But this is a working decoy. He obviously experimented with it. He hollowed it out to make it lighter. And it, it's signed by Lem Ward saying that it's one of, his, one of his early birds from his hunting rig. And uh, then eventually what happened was they got so very good at carving and painting. If you look at this bird, by 1936, this is a working decoy, but it was so good that whoever he sold it to took this decoy and put it on the shelf Aww. and never hunted over it. And I have a question to ask you, Henry. Yes. Have you ever hunted with any of the decoys that were um, made by the Ward Brothers? I have not. When you, when you came upon I hunt upon for decoys, them. I don't hunt for ducks. <laughs> Nothing but, against duck hunting, but, but, but when, no. you, when you came upon a work of their caliber, did you say to yourself, I need to hold this and not use it? Yes, and many people did, even back in the 30s before I was born. People started to put those on the shelf. Aww. And then other people, decided to carve decoys to see if they could carve one as pretty as the wards Aww. could. And it became, it became an art form. And, and eventually to where we are now is that the vast majority of carvings, wood carvings, are made for the shelf, are made for the mantle. But the Ward brothers worked all the way through that transition. They made decorative decoys in the 50s, 60s, and 70s 
themselves and made fewer and fewer working decoys. And you were saying that it's not only the 100th anniversary of their wood carving, but then of the, uh, there's, it's a 50 year anniversary as well. That's right. The, uh, the, uh, we celebrate the 100th anniversary of their carving and the 50th anniversary of the Ward Foundation, which has resulted in the Ward Museum in Salisbury and also the World Championships. So the World Championships in Carving every year, which are held in Ocean City, Maryland, are named after the Ward Brothers as well in recognition for their work in that transition from working decoys into the art form we have today. And it's very poignant that we celebrate Waterfowl Festival at the same time that Thanksgiving comes upon us and uh, the Thanksgiving for the men and women who have fought in our wars and for service for our country. Yeah, that's interesting because it, um, Steve Ward actually fought in World War I. He went, he went away uh, in, in 1917 and it was upon his return in 1918 from France that he uh, started carving to uh, made his own rig to, to begin hunting as he returned to Crisfield. And you have to consider how primitive Crisfield was at that time. These self-taught art, self artists, um, I mean, the road to Crisfield was a dirt road. Yes. And they never drove a car. They never had an art lesson. And, um, and yet they evolved into um, world-renowned carvers. Well, Henry, thank you for continuing the tradition of wood carving of ducks and geese and waterfowl and for um, serving our country as well. You're very welcome.